this is, this is, this is. Well, thanks for taking the time, Emily. Welcome back to the podcast. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm good, really good. Um, I'm I'm gaining momentum in 2022. I was I, I felt a little lethargic coming in at, 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 into the new year, out of the old year. You know, um, I don't know why. I think actually I do know why. I think a, a little bit about a, a little bit dealing with a shoulder injury. I talked about it briefly on the podcast before, but I'm finally it's getting better and I'm moving more and I'm starting to work out. I'm starting to do some cardio and I think that's that means everything to me like getting that momentum in my body gives me momentum in my mind and totally yeah i don't, I don't know so that's how i'm i'm doing <laughs> so I, pretty good I, pretty good i know that feeling well of being like having an injury and not being able to exercise and then you just feel like it just makes everything kind of worse you know yeah you don't feel like getting a lot done or or like you can get yeah a lot. yeah exactly yeah, you, I, I mean, you're the antithesis of that. You get a lot done. You you seem to, anyway, from, from, <laughs> from, from what, what I see online. You're you're all over the place, Emily. You're doing, you're still doing Patreon, right? Is it? Yeah. And, yeah, and that's going Patreon. really great. And you've, you've put out a couple records, like a, a cover record. Uh-huh. Uh, and then you're, you're on, uh, you're on an upcoming, actually the single's out. You're on, what's the song called? Uh, Lovely Residence. Yeah. With Audio, yeah, Audio Karate. Karate. Mm-hmm. Awesome. We can talk about all of that stuff. I'm sure there's more. Um, especially, actually, you know, what am I forgetting? I'm forgetting MXPX just released our, our latest live record. Uh, yes. South Band of San Antonio from our last show in 2022. The last show we've played still. We haven't played yet. So, yeah. uh, since then. So, uh, it's kind of cool to have that document of the last show before the world broke. Yeah. And I you, agree. you were on it. You were there. You were, you were part of the photo shoots. It was great. You were at soundcheck. It was, it was really fun. And I don't know. I mean, uh, we talked a little bit about it before, but the record wasn't out. So did you get a chance to hear, hear your, your song tomorrow's another yeah. day? Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, it's, I think the most awesome part is, um, just the crowd, uh, you know, the, you got a really good, um, recording of the crowd participating as well in, in yeah. so many of the songs and they're just so good. They're so good at singing that crowd. San Antonio has always been amazing. Like, you know, even when Tumble Down was touring San Antonio, we'd play, well, we weren't just touring San Antonio, we we're touring Texas and, and everywhere. But San Antonio was like one of our hot spots. And, yeah. and you know, I think that carried over, you know, when MXPX came back, um, just we play around Texas, but uh, San Antonio just holds a very special place in my heart. I think it's the people. It's, it's yeah. definitely not just... Uh, the Alamo or something cheesy like that. It's yeah. the it's the people and and uh, and you know the just the scene. You know, there's a really strong scene in San Antonio musically, and as far as punk rock and anything on the on the edges of that. Yeah, I agree. San Antonio is a great a great punk rock city. It always was for Tsunami Bomb too. Yeah, yeah. And I I kind of think it has something to do with. Well, I know that San Antonio has a lot of like metal roots. Um, which I think kind of morphed into punk rock as well at some point, but also I think the proximity to Austin, because Austin is so, um, you know, indie rock that came from country, I feel like, or that came from, not country, like what, like Stevie Ray Vaughan type stuff, you know? Like Like, the blues. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yeah, yeah, absolutely, I agree. I mean, Austin has a very, obviously, you know, I mean, we started playing Austin. The first place we ever played was a place called Babes on 6th Street. And I don't know it. It's it's long gone, but it's probably, it became, I want to say emos or something. Like it was something that was just like a normal venue that everybody knows from South by Southwest. But before that, it was called Babes on 6th Street. And it was just this bar. And everything going there was all it was always one of the coolest towns we would play austin texas and then san antonio you're right about the metal thing because the first show we ever played in san antonio was i think the promoter was in a metal band and so Uh we played with a metal band 
And it, it was, <laughs> I, I don't really remember the show too much, obviously, but uh, <laughs> I think it was good. <laughs> and we built from there. It was great. But yes, yeah, Southbound to San Antonio, though, you know, we didn't want to release it until we kind of saw light at the end of the tunnel. Because what I mean by that is releasing a live record makes people want to go see a live show. And yeah. so if you release a live record during the pandemic when they can't go see a live show, uh, it kind of just frustrates people in, in some ways. You know, they'll enjoy the music for what it is. But I think, you know, that's that's really a main the main reason why we kind of waited till the end of 2020. 21 and uh, released it when we announced our shows because we have some shows coming up in April so mm -hmm. uh, finally getting back to it that was before Omicron but I, I honestly feel like and, and the shows are selling well um, when Omicron hit the you know it drastically slowed down so I yeah. think but I think you know by the time we get get there Omicron's going to be, it's already on a, on the decline and all that. So there'll be yeah. a new variant or something, but I, yeah. <laughs> at some point you just kind of have to go like, why am I afraid? You know, why am I afraid? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you just, you have to do what you got to do. But on yeah. my end of things, like the shows are going to happen. So we That's just awesome. have to be vigilant. Um, but yeah, going back to Southbound to San Antonio, you know, just, just not wanting to get people too excited about live shows until we have something on the books. So uh, we released it, people were excited. I think, you know, it was just, you know, it's kind of just one of those fun things to do. We have the ability to record shows now and then you can just mix them later. I know that some bands record absolutely every show. We try to record every show, but speaking, let's get back to, you know, back to your involvement, you know, having you come up is just part of something that makes the show even that much more special, something something to tell your friends when you get home or you know whatever it is but for me personally you know it makes it makes that show more memorable like oh yeah having friends come up and play come up and sing yeah. uh so yeah thanks for doing it again and uh, yeah it was a ton of fun i for, love doing that for those that don't know if, if you haven't heard emily on past podcasts we've talked about it a bit but you've collabed on tons of our stuff by now like it's stacked up over the <laughs> yeah. years so i was i was a little jealous when i saw the audio karate thing i was like no no that's good that's good <laughs> <laughs> well i saw that you guys have a new uh have a new female uh collaborator too so <laughs> yeah oh, or even now. <laughs> ah touche touche that's too true i was oh, like man. oh okay it's fine <laughs> mm. exactly the same sentiment yeah, exactly <laughs> yes <laughs> You got me. Damn. <laughs> Quick. Uh, but yeah, no. So, I mean, I think it's, I think it's something that we're trying to do more and more is collaborate. So, you know, even with, with, um, the shows we're doing, we're collaborating with friends, you know, our friends we're playing with, and I see that you're playing with audio karate coming up for the record yeah. release. Right. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. that seems to be the way to go. Like collabs. Totally. Totally. Although, I mean, I, I was just going to add real quick. That's all. I mean, that's been something you've been doing for a while, obviously with us and stuff, but it seems to be people want more and more of it. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's always fun, you know, to have some, to have some uh, sort of crossover stuff going on with different bands and uh, it makes everything a little bit more exciting. You know, I'm kind of hoping to do that with, I don't, I don't, I still don't know what I'm doing with my record. But since I'm solo, I'm like, you know, trying to think of who I could have on my record. Mm -hmm. so hint, hint, hint. I, I, I'm definitely down. <laughs> I, I, I will say it right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be on it. Whatever you need, harmonies, you know, playing, I'm down. Awesome. Uh, so about your record, I know that you, you know, you've never released a solo record and completely written all the songs yourself yeah yet right like you've done right. singles you've done maybe even eps i'm not sure uh but is this something that's kind of been i don't know almost like a monolith in front of you something like like a big <laughs> challenge yeah 100 percent. i mean we talked about it the first time i was on your yeah, podcast yeah and I, I was sure. encouraging you to like, like keep writing do it do yes it. <laughs> yes it's been a while now which is like the one thing that 
the one thing that's been bumming me out about, about passing time, like I feel like I've done a ton of stuff since I last talked to you. Mm -hmm. I've done so much. I've been so busy and just like doing lots of things, but I still don't have that record done. And it's, it's further. It's, um, it's come along. Um, but I still have writing to do. Uh, so that, that kind of sucks. Cause I'm like, it's so slow. You know, some people mm -hmm. can just churn out, uh, like MXPX <laughs> you guys just churn wow. out records and, and, uh, I'm, you know, I, I try to embody that, but I, I just haven't been able to. So, but, um, I am excited about, uh, the stuff that I have written so far and what I've released since I talked to you last was just the covers album, which I did, mm -hmm. I did record and mix that myself and just kind of threw it out into the world. Um, but yeah, still working on my own. Although, um, I am in the final stages of mixing a single to release digitally. I was hoping to have a, an actual release date by the time we talked, but mm -hmm. I'm hoping to release that within like six weeks or so, maybe. Okay. okay. If, if you know before, you know, this airs, then just let me know and I'll throw it in the intro or, or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So would that single end up being on the record too, probably? Um, I would hope so, although I recorded that myself as well. Um, I'm having my friend uh, Nick from the band Lungs and Limbs. He's mixing it and mastering it. So I've been learning a lot about, you know, I don't know if it will be consistent enough with the rest of the record. Like maybe I would re-record it sure. um, to go with a, the full album. But, uh, and of course it depends on how many songs I have. If I have some sort of crazy inspirational burst, <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, too many right. songs, you know? You know, it's interesting. Like, I wonder, how do you, how do you, how are you writing songs traditionally? Is it like, let me just sit down at the piano, come up with a, with a chord progression and, and a melody, and then you put lyrics to it. Is that how you're doing it? Or are you doing it a little more advanced than that? So I've been kind of, um, I've been doing it all different ways. Traditionally for me, um, as a vocalist, I, you know, in my past bands and stuff, it's been work on the, the music first, and then I put melody and words over it. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> so, uh, I've been trying some of that. I, sometimes I sit down at the computer with the MIDI keyboard and, see what kind of sounds inspire me. Like I'll, you know, I'll, I'll try an organ sound or a piano or just a, a variety, like a bass type sound mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and just try and write some music that way. I also have a notebook full of like, well, not full, but I have a notebook with some like uh, lyrical concepts with sort of loose poetry around each concept. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes I... I, actually, the first time in a long time recently, I took my lyrics first and sat down and decided, sort of put them into a into a chorus type, and then sat at the piano and built a melody around it. So I, I don't have like a go-to method for for songwriting, which I think is maybe part of the problem. It could be part of the problem. I mean, I, I have go-to methods but i also don't always write that way so I, I do sometimes do it like you're saying i mix it up but the reason i asked is because i was talking to aj from aj perdomo from the dangerous summer and they're very electronic rock they're a rock band but they're electronic uh elements to a lot of the stuff they do and and it's just two guys um aj and matt and they they have this like program that has like loops and different things that they can literally use for free or though and so like some of the songs they write are based off a loop and it's just like choo choo oh that's cool let's use that and they'll they'll write a whole song around one little little idea and i know that you're very electronic everything you do is you know on the keyboard and and drum machines and stuff like that so that might be something that you can add to your toolbox and yeah. that's that's the thing is is you don't if you're doing the a methodology the same way you're going to kind of get similar things so i mean 
I don't know. I would, I would try, keep, continue just moving towards the light. That's, that's what I call different methods of songwriting, like whatever it takes to get it done, right? Yeah. Just, just, no, that's a really good idea. Yeah. Because, like, I, I mean, I have access to, to loops as well. I, I subscribe to um, Splice, which is, like... That's what they use. Okay, yeah. Okay. But okay. And, I, and I always mm-hmm. think, like, you know, I wouldn't want to use a... I don't use the loops often because I wouldn't want to really put like a, no, a a known loop into a song, you know, as a as a like a focus of the music. But I could totally write a song around a loop and then mm-hmm. take it out. You can or almost switch just even it take it, yeah, or, you know. yeah, and you switch it up so much, or you you layer so much on top. I mean, I, I guess it's just it's 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 probably like <laughs> because we've been doing songwriting so long you have a tendency to not want to use that loop thing. And I, and I probably feel that way too, like, cause I've never done it. I've never, mm-hmm. I've always just write. I usually my method is I pick up a guitar acoustic and I strum chords and I play little riffs and stuff. And I figure out the song and melody. And then the lyrics come usually at the same ish time, but sometimes after, um, but yeah, sometimes, you know, I've written a song on a piano few songs you know they're all ding ding like ballad style most of them you know it's like because that's all i could really play on the piano so it's like ding ding (laughs) Ding, ding. the descending like major to to i don't know it would be like uh what is that uh i don't know what you call that but uh i don't either (laughs) when you descend one note on the bass note it's like so if you're like a and then and then it's a over it's a flat over e would be like a power chord you know but oh uh-huh. i don't know what it's called yeah, that's what i'm yeah i don't either a fifth no uh, it's probably something simple and that i kind of knew at one one point and then i just forgot but i've been using those i used to call them devil chords you know like you i mean i still use them all the time like almost every song has not every song but <laughs> half my songs have them yeah and I don't even know what it's called. So, I mean, yeah, the, the, that's the beauty of songwriting and making music and being creative is like, you just, there's no rules. And I think people figured that out and realized, oh, nobody's paying attention. As long as it's like, oh, as long as it's legally okay to use this loop, I'm going to yeah. use this loop. You know, it's a tool. Yeah. So, yeah. I definitely have used some too on, um, I use some on my, on my covers album. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, okay. it's a subscription. Like I, I can, I can legally use them. But yeah. I never thought. I, I love that idea of. Uh, that's a great tip. Of yeah. Trying to work with them, just using them as a, as a like a tool for the melody of a song. Yeah, and I learned that from Matt. You know, I mean, I like I said, I've never really tried it. Uh, you know, the closest I've come is like there's a I made a loop out of a Star Wars sound on um, Empire Strikes Back at the beginning there's like this this probe that comes down and it's like in the in Hoth the ice planet have you seen the movie I don't know yeah, <laughs> yeah I've seen it <laughs> and there's there's like this like weird noise so I like took that from the TV I actually like recorded it off the TV and I put it into a song called 1 and 3 it it came out on on think it came out on let's rock i don't know but uh <laughs> it came out on one of our like b-side type albums but it was a really cool like use of i don't know ambient sounds but it was i made it into a loop it wasn't a loop but i made it into like a rhythmic kind of thing so you kind of like cool. yeah what's the song called i want to write it down one and three one and three can you like can you hear it can you you if can, I go listen to it, will I be like, oh, there's that part? Yeah, yeah, it's right at the beginning. Okay, Yeah, yeah it's cool. right at the beginning. Yeah, you, you can't miss it. It's just like something you don't normally hear in an MXPX song. So you're like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but not in a bad way. I think it's in a, in a cool way. People dig it. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, th- yeah, I mean, that's something that I was like, I wonder if I get, I'll get in trouble for, it's literally not my material, but I changed it enough. And I think you, that's mm-hmm. the key is, you you know, you can even, for instance, like somebody like Kanye West takes, um, they take like oldies and they put it, they speed up, speed it up, they slow it down, they they take a little piece, but they change the the volume and the the tempos and the 
everything not volume i'm sure they change yeah sure they change the volume but um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you know you know what i'm saying they they just change yeah. it to make to so you're like i recognize that that's such a hook why do i know that but it's you might not never figure it out unless you hear yeah. that song or somebody points it out because there's a lot of really cool videos on youtube if you're super nerdy audiophile types you can hear comparisons you know oh this you know came from this came from this and all that you know yeah anyway <laughs> <laughs> i i you know i find that uh somehow you know you could take the same chord progression and write 50 songs that sound i mean sure they'll sound a little bit alike but it kind of sound different you know but i think it over time like if you're not writing them one right after the other they'll sound more different have mm -hmm. you noticed that is it is it just because you're a different person when you write the song later in life probably <laughs> i, I <know>. mean <laughs> silly question i don't know I, well i i uh I, that is kind of like talking about you know the same chords in the song like one of my one of my big fears with songwriting by myself is having one of those uh one of those um nickelback moments where you could put my same vocals over a different song you know mm -hmm. do you ever do you ever feel like that do you ever are you ever writing and you're like i already wrote this song <laughs> uh sometimes sometimes yeah i mean there's there's like t styles of songs that i write that it's like this is such a good song but it doesn't fit with this group of songs and and then there's a whole nother style of song that doesn't fit with this you know so i do that all the time now do i fear it not really like i i i traditionally have always if i notice something sounds like something i'll try to seek it out i'll try to like go and listen to the part and see if it is and uh -huh. because sometimes you you really are inspired by something but you come up with something that doesn't sound like it you just think it does because you probably kind of tried to cop it but you didn't quite do it right right so yeah because <laughs> so, that's the thing is like if songwriting was so easy when you just like just write a million hits you know like come on like it's just not yeah. that easy i mean even when you try to rip off somebody else it just there is an authenticity that's lost and and, and it always i always f miss that if if you know i always hear that in my own stuff in other people's stuff in in the recordings it's so hard to record too uh especially your own vocals you know to get a good performance and you know the the, the tippy top people i'm sure i maybe do one one take two takes but i'm who am I kidding? I think, I think I'm probably at least in punk rock up there, you know, as far as a singer. Um, and I do so many takes. So, I mean, yeah. everybody don't feel bad if you have to do so many takes because it just takes a lot of time and effort to, to, pro, you know, just to like produce a good quality recording. Yeah, I so agree. It's easy to just put like auto tune on everything and like, sure that can cut I mean, maybe for certain styles i'm not dissing auto-tune i'm not saying don't use it uh you know we even use it sometimes as a tool and, and when we need it but uh <laughs> that's true uh, yeah. a little confession but you know but for the most part uh, that's not who we've been traditionally so i'm not trying to like okay now we're just going to use auto-tune all the time and and we don't have to try anymore but um you know every time i sing a song in the studio i get so much better at singing it live so if i haven't sung a song if i haven't recorded a song on vocal and i sing it live it's gonna be much rougher i feel like than than a song i've done at least somewhat recently in the studio there, that fades with time after an album's out for years and years but i don't know do you feel is that ever you ever run into that where you're like i'm, I'm singing this all of a sudden so much better oh i just recorded it or something like that i don't know yeah. Yeah. I feel like it goes both ways where like if you've only been playing it live and then you sing it in the studio and record it, you can really hear you can really tell which notes are you're struggling with. You know, at least for me, it's like, oh, now I can really hear it. And now I know what I, you know, I'm going to have to work on to get it good in the studio. Um, but I also feel the opposite where because I've recorded some songs, I'm sure you have too, where 
I've never played them live and then play them live, you know, a bunch of times and go back and listen to the recording and like, oh, it's not as good as as it it could be, you know, as it yes, is now, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like not as strong or something, you know. Yeah. Well, it's because you did the work of recording and mm-hmm. then you got then you were much better and then you started doing it live and then still continuing that work doing live that's practice too yeah. so you come back to it i mean to be honest like almost every record the last couple records we've made i've re- redone vocals um on multiple songs um on self-titled i redid a couple a couple full songs probably um and a couple sections of songs where i just felt like okay that wasn't believable there i need to go harder on that part or this just inflection is weird but i get super super technical with like listening to what i'm saying and and it, uh, sometimes i have to let it go and i'm like you know, i have to like ask other people like does this bother you and they're like, yeah. <laughs> what what and i'm like the thing this little thing you know i say this and i like do an s on the end like does that is that weird and I'm like no so like i'm like okay, I believe you, but I don't believe, like, it's just like, okay, you know, so there's a threshold uh, for me of if I can live with it and it doesn't bother anybody else, then maybe I need to let people, he- they hear it differently than I'm hearing it. Probably, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of that when I'm singing, but back to just like the practice of recording. I mean, I have to, I feel like the first run a lot of times is that like first draft. If you're an author, you're not, releasing your first draft there's editors there's you know it's like why why do singers have to be perfect you know like yeah so so, (laughs) because you know authors get so many drafts and they get editors after that and uh proofreaders and then it still gets screwed up right you know but yeah (laughs) there's still typos in books so i mean you know just it's just being human and i think that's just that's something you should just take into making your record is is People love that you are you. And so just translate that to, you know, new songs and don't worry too much about, about the technicalities of it all. Um, but just, you know, I mean, it's a journey and, and it's going to be, I think it's the ups and downs of it, right? Like when you're, when you're writing a song and you're in the middle of it and it's going well and you've already gone past the hard part, you've got a good chorus, right? And yeah. you've got a good verse and you need one more verse maybe a bridge you feel great but when you're writing that chorus and you're like this isn't working then it's just like but right over the hill you're feeling great so i mean just i think for me it's helped me to know that as a songwriter as you know somebody that's making records and and when you're finished making the record you're not finished making the record you got to do all the hard work you got to do the the sequencing, you got to prove, you know, if you're mixing yourself, you're, that's pull your hair out sometimes. Like, why <laughs> yeah. can't I get it the way I think it should sound? You know, things like that. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> it's so hard. Yeah. So uh, on the technical end, are you using Pro Tools or are you using uh, something else? Logic? I, yeah, I've been using Ableton Live. Ableton Live. Okay. Were you using yeah. Ableton Live back when we talked back probably? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Still doing yeah. it. Yeah, I've been I've kind of been debating using uh, switching to Logic, but um, maybe but for I mix. What, what about mixing though? Like recording's one thing, but mixing. I've been. I mean, I've just been doing it in Able in live. Work. Okay, mm-hmm. that's yeah. a comfort zone kind of thing, right? Because yeah. you know, you yeah. know it. I understand that. I you know, I probably talked about this before, but I somewhat recently, maybe by now over a year ago, but I switched from Adobe to apple so like basically on for video editors so it was uh you know adobe uh premiere and then premiere pro and then i switched to final cut pro and the difference is it's way different you know i feel like adobe's more like pro tools and um i think final cut pro is more like logic and so it was just like blowing my mind that I, nothing worked and nothing made sense. 
but I, but once I just like I lived in it. I lived in my filth. That's what I like to call it. <laughs> just you know, when you're learning something new, it's like you're like wearing diapers. You you shit your pants. You know, <laughs> so <laughs> so you live in your filth, and you finally realize what it all means <laughs> you know like when when you see the matrix numbers and they all start making sense and you see what's really yeah. there um that's that's really been my experience but honestly with final cut pro i did and i i know how to use it now if there's something i don't know how to do i know exactly what to do to figure it out go to youtube and yeah. uh, <laughs> and so it's just like life is easy in, in that respect and so that brings me back to logic you know i've tried logic and it just doesn't make sense but i have not lived in my filth i haven't totally you know forsaken pro tools and said okay i'm gonna just live on logic and you know try to do stuff try to maybe record a few things or pull in some maybe pull in a project and mix it or something like that but i don't you know you always need i feel like people in our line of work where it's just like, whatever you want to do, let's just go. You need a reason to learn something new. You need a project exactly. that's, that's going to be fruitful, you know, for you personally. So yeah. for me, well, you need a reason why yeah. too, you know, like why switch? Yeah. Why switch? Because it's probably better, uh -huh. but you know, hard, harder at first. Yes. So, I mean, I mean, yeah, there's, there's pros and cons. I, I, I would say Logic, without knowing much about Ableton Live, Logic is very well known for its electronic end, like the samples, the synths, all the, all the sounds you can add. It, that's what it's known for. And, and, and anybody that does pop music, and I mean, a lot of people still use Pro Tools, don't get me wrong, for, for everything. But, but uh, a lot of people use Logic. You know, they'll, they'll go to Logic... Um, but it, you know, a lot of people grew up using GarageBand. Have you ever used yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, that's I have. basically Logic. Similar, it's right? Very yeah. simple. It's a simplistic version of Logic. Mm -hmm. I never really got into GarageBand because I learned Pro Tools. Before. Yeah, GarageBand is too simple for you, probably, right? Like if it, you knew if you knew Pro Tools, then going to GarageBand is like pointless. Yeah, I mean, it's harder for me because, yeah, it's the same thing where just the things don't do what I think they should do. In Pro Tools, you just grab things. Doo, 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 doo. But I get it. I mean, there, it, you can do that. You just have to learn how, you know, the, the Apple way, right? Which yeah. I've been using Apple's forever. I mean, I, I used Final Cut Pro back before 10 when it was Final Cut 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then when it switched to 10, I went to Adobe. I was like, I heard this is a nightmare, and it was for for many years. <laughs> uh, but then it got better, and then I came back over to Final Cut Pro 10, something or whatever it is, and it's been great. But like I said, I didn't know how to use it, so that was very intimidating. Yeah, the learning curve, the time as well. With Logic, just YouTube it, just figure it out, you know. And, and yeah, you know what you should do is just do some research on. Is there even a reason to to move over to Logic versus Ableton Live? Yeah. What's, what are the main differences? You know, is it? Yeah. Well, I I know that. I mean, starting out with Ableton Live, uh, the whole point of that was because it, because uh, you know, I used to have uh, a second band member in Survival Guide, and Jason played guitar, and he was the main like tech guy. So, it Ableton Live was more suited to using uh not only loops and samples and stuff but also setting it up to be able to play it live with uh with you know whatever type of midi instruments we wanted it was um it seemed to be the best for that like assigning different um uh you know different sounds or tracks to different buttons on a midi controller um, that kind of stuff. And also we had synced it to video as well. So we had like a projection that would all come from, you know, it could all be triggered through the computer. And now that doesn't really apply to me because I don't use my computer to play shows anymore because mm. I had some, I had lots of problems with it crashing. Oh my God. What a nightmare. <laughs> what do you use now? A sampler? Yeah, I have a drum. I have a, uh, one of those, uh, Roland, uh, drum pads. Okay. You know, yeah. that drummers use, and uh, I've got samples loaded onto that, and then. But I also I have a keyboard that I haven't um, 
that I, I still need a program that has some, uh, some space in it too, and some pads for sampling. So I don't know. I don't quite know what I'm doing, but I'm definitely not using the computer because that was some <laughs> of the worst, the worst experiences that I've ever had on stage with, uh, my stuff just going out during yeah. the show. And you're like, I swear it worked yesterday. Like, yeah. Yeah, it was it was nightmarish. I actually had lots of nightmares after that. <laughs> did you really? Oh my god! Yeah. What did you do? Did you end up fixing it, or did you just play by yourself on the keyboard? Did the keyboard work? Oh, so what it would do was um, it it kept it would just uh, the key the keyboard would work. Anything that wasn't programmed, which mostly for my live set was the drum beat. So the so the drums would be would just stop. And, uh, you know, like mid song, I'm playing and singing and then suddenly there's no drums at all. And, uh, so, and then it would start working again. Like I could see that my, that my drum pad that was controlling it was malfunctioning. Although I never could figure out what the problem was. I replaced that. I replaced all the cables. I did all kinds of upgrades and stuff and I never figured it out. So, um, Hmm. so yeah, it was horrible. (laughs) Yeah, that that's the equivalent of me breaking like two strings or the amp just like that happened, you know, an amp would go out of occasionally that kind of thing. But after a while, you just have to figure out what works. You know, you have to get a bulletproof setup. Uh, Tom, our guitar player, he, the, he we played Chain Fest a couple years ago. Um, I think it was the first year. And his pedal board was just shitting the bed the whole time. Like not the whole time, but like right when we're supposed to go on stage like we're we're late because he's trying to get it to work and oh no a- after that he's just like that's it and he went crazy he he did so much research he contacted all these companies then now we're endorsed by all these like pedal type companies you know and stuff but <laughs> he's got like a, a bulletproof pedal board you know yeah. as bulletproof as you possibly can can be and uh And that all started because of, you know, just major, major issues so many times too. like, just like at some point you have to change at some point you have to do something to make a change. Yeah. 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 (laughs) So, (laughs) but I mean, that says some, what does that say about you that you subject yourself to that kind of the possibility of that kind of, I don't know, humiliation is, is it humiliating to you or is it no big deal when that kind of things happen? Like, how do you take it? Uh, I mean, I feel like it's a lot easier to handle that kind of stuff on stage when you're not the only person on stage, you know, yeah. you have someone else there to, to kind of distract while you figure out what you're doing, uh, which traditionally was always me. Cause if, you know, just being a vocalist, usually it's not the vocals that go out. So doing survival guide is, is, uh, it's much more stressful (laughs) for sure. (laughs) Uh, I don't know what it says about me though. I guess it says that, uh, I really love performing, you know, to be, to be, to be subjecting myself to that. And it, it definitely, I think the humiliation level, uh, totally depended on, the show, the situation, uh, like sometimes during a show I was able to pull it off. Like, Oh, what? You know, like, I don't know. One time I was just like, are there ghosts in here? You know, it just, I I was able to kind of play it off and it was fine. Um, but the last time that it happened, I would, the show itself was already really awkward. Um, because it was like some sort of, it was like a fundraiser or something. So it wasn't like a show. It was more Uh, like, I was the music, you know, for, uh, they had multiple bands, but like I was one of the bands playing this fundraiser that was like uh, some sort of an art show. So people were kind of like walking around looking at stuff that, you know, uh, art for sale. And, uh, and so they weren't even there to see me. So when the music completely stopped, it was just like crickets and everyone's looking at me like, what happened? Why did you interrupt our art browsing <laughs> with your silence yeah yeah oh <laughs> ouch that was uh yeah that was pretty awkward <laughs> you just gotta go through it yeah i mean I, I don't know what it is but it's just like i'm a pretty shy person but somehow i subject myself to the same things as you i mean i don't know why but <laughs> i think i think it's just like 
an obsession with performing. Yeah. Yeah. Performing is, is the best. It's just so fun. And, and that actually is a great segue into another thing I've been doing lately, which has been streaming on Twitch, which I was wondering if you've ever like ventured into that, into like, uh, live streaming performances. You have, right? I have. Yeah. On Facebook. Yeah. I've done it a lot on Facebook. Um, I've been on other people's Twitches quite, quite, quite a bit. So yeah, it's fun. Um, so you have a Twitch where, what's your Twitch called by the way? Is it survival Survival guide music, survival guide music, the full spelling. Yep. All right, cool. Yeah. I mean, so, so you get on there, you do like, you do like a weekly set or is it for your Patreon or no, Twitch is different than the Patreon, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you do totally separate things. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Okay. You're busy. So, so, so tell me about the Twitch. Um, what's the show like? What do you do? Is it like, is it like right here? Like, do we see the setup or is it different? It's here. Um, I have some, (laughs) I have some, uh, some cooler, uh, lighting going on during my Twitch setup. And I also move the keyboard over so I can, um, my setup is slightly different, but yeah, I use this piano here. Um, and I use, Oh, I use, uh, that reverb pedal. Oh yeah. You sent me. (laughs) Yeah. I use that reverb pedal for my vocals, which is amazing. Um, and I play, uh, I, so it's, I don't know, it's kind of extremely casual. Um, when I first, you know, when, when the pandemic started and everybody was doing, um, streaming shows, performances, I was kind of like, that's, I don't even know, like my setup is so, uh, there's so much going on with my live set and my setup and all the keyboards and all that kind of stuff. Like I just didn't even really want to, um, figure out how to do it. And it seemed to me like it wouldn't be that interesting. I don't know. I talked to myself out of it, um, and for a million reasons. And, um, and I thought that's what it would be like on Twitch too. Um, but when I started looking around on it, I s- noticed that the musicians on there, it's just super casual. It's like they're hanging out. There's a live chat. I'm sure it's probably the same on Facebook, but I don't really, it's not the same where, I mean, unless maybe it is the same. I haven't really looked around on, um, to see if it's, if it's like the type of thing where you can just find random musicians. Cause that's kind of how it is on Twitch. It's like, you can go on and, and see, Oh, what's this person doing? What's this, you know, what kind of music are they doing? And yeah. you can just go into their, go into their stream and you, as the artist, you can just hang out, talk to people in chat and then, and take requests and, uh, and just play a song. Like, I think like the streams are way, way longer than a regular set because it's a lot of just like hanging out, which has been part of the fun of it is people can come and, you know, especially because what I've been doing is I've been gradually learning various um, songs. I have cover songs that I do. um, And then my survival guide um, acoustic songs. And I've also been learning some from other eras. So I've learned some tsunami bomb songs and some action design songs so my fans can come and like request a tsunami bomb song from me and talk about it and you know say what their experience was like listening to the song as a teenager or whatever you know yeah um so yeah and it's i think the casualness of it is what is what i really like about it i added um it's kind of ridiculous but i added bass as well with a like a distortion pedal so most of the songs i do are on piano but some of them i do with just a bass just like a bass. An, ele- an electric Ooh. bass yeah that's awesome i didn't know you yeah. played bass is that the bass <laughs> yeah that's the bass sweet right on i didn't know you played bass i mean i don't really <laughs> but you do now i do, i do now yeah when did you start doing that uh playing bass yeah Um, And what song are you playing, by the way, in your live set? So uh, the first band that I was ever in, 
I ended up playing bass and singing because our bass player left for college. So when I was in high school, I played bass and sang in that band and okay. then in my next band as well. It was a three-piece band. You probably I, mentioned that like f- years and years ago. Yeah, I, yeah, maybe. Probably on the first, the first yeah. podcast. Yeah, <laughs> I need to go back, do my homework. <laughs> <laughs> I, maybe it came up, I don't know. But, um, but I added the bass to my Twitch stream like a couple months ago. I'd say I've probably done like eight streams with it. And I do, I mean, I'm adding, it's way easier for me to add songs to my list on bass. Really? Than piano. Well, yeah. Why is that? I think because it's one note. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. The truth comes out. <laughs> bass is easy. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's probably why I can, I, I mean, I guess I could probably learn to play guitar and, and sing in MXP because there's a lot of things that I couldn't do on guitar and sing in my band that I can Uh do on bass because single note. Yeah. 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 But I also write, I write because of that. I write things based on that knowledge, you know, too. Yeah. I I think also the, just like the shapes of, uh, I don't know. It's interesting because like in one way, I feel like piano is a lot easier the way that it's laid out. But then when I, start learning, you know, start trying to learn a cover song or even one of my own songs on bass, it seems more natural somehow. The, like the left hand or, you know, the fret, the fret hand Mm. to be able to find the right notes automatically. So I don't know, I get, maybe it's just that I somehow, even though I've been playing, you know, piano and keyboard for the last however long, (laughs) maybe it somehow is more natural for me to play bass. I don't know. Right. I mean, I think it, it probably is. Just keep doing it. So yeah. are you just playing, when you're playing bass, are you playing to a backing track? Like a lot <laughs> no. of other thing? It's just, <laughs> no. do just you, and you're singing. Yeah. I love that. It's, Whoa. I mean, it's, it's weird. It's really weird. Um, is there anything on YouTube? Uh, yeah. All of my, all of my, um, my on-demand videos, I, I post them to YouTube afterwards. So you can see the, What's your YouTube Past streams? Uh, you know what? I think it's survival <laughs> guide music. Okay. Actually. That's good. Keep it. <laughs> good, good, good. All right, cool. I don't need to write that down. That's easy. Or, I mean, if you went on YouTube and just did the SRV VLGD, that would for sure come up for that too. Yeah. True. But, um, yeah, I I'm should learn it. I should do an MXPX song. What would you I, do? What, what song? What's the kind of song you would do? Would it be I like a mid tempo? Uh, I mean, they're all varied right now. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I'm doing, I've got my song list. Cause I, uh, one thing about Twitch that up uh, Twitch musicians is that a lot of them, um, they obviously are playing and reading like sheet music and oh. their, their request lists are like, you look at their, how many songs and they have like 300 songs you can choose from. And that is not, uh, wow possible for me because i don't know how to read music or tabs or anything so um so i've been adding just songs that i feel like would you know that i would know already that i kind of know the structure of and um so i've got like a bouncing souls song i've got some misfit songs i mean on the bass it i feel like that that it works it works. I have translated Misfits to um, piano as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but with a punk song, it's like, it just is so much more natural to do it on bass. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And That's, quicker. <laughs> I love that you're playing bass now. I mean, again, but yeah. <laughs> it's super weird. So I have to sometimes, because people do stumble into my channel and I'm like, yeah, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm playing bass, a distorted. I've just got like a distortion pedal for the bass. Yeah. And uh, is the bass through. just in an amp? Just in the like. No, I'm just going direct. Oh, direct. Okay. So, yeah. okay. Pedal, then the direct. Got it. Simple. Yeah. And in the future, I mean, in the future, in the near future, it's going to be everybody's going to have goggles, you know, VR goggles. Yeah. <laughs> And you'll you'll be there in your room, but you it'll look like you're in some stadium or something. I don't know. Yes. I don't even think it'll be, look like that. Like that'll that's like a relic of the past 
kind of thing. Not <laughs> stadiums. Yeah, it will be probably. I don't know. Maybe not. But I'm not trying to predict the future in that way. But I guess what I'm just saying is just like VR goggles are going to be. You know, people will be be able to hang out with you and talk. You know, and maybe you don't want their mics on or whatever if you're singing, but they'll chat. They'll probably come up and you're like, yeah, it'll in pop your up. Vision, yeah, and. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like in some ways it seems cool, but in, in the reality ways, it freaks me out because I'm like, okay, that definitely means that all these corporations are hooked up into my brain somehow. And I don't like oh, that. Totally. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. But I mean, VR, I'm into. I'm definitely into. I've never, uh, I've never owned a system, but I've tried, tried it out yeah. a few times. But it's pretty cool. You can't deny yeah, it. It's pretty actually, cool. My my mom got me that one of those for Christmas. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that yeah. something that you wanted that, or did that you it didn't seems, know you, you wanted? I mean, I, <laughs> no, I didn't know. I had never tried it. Although, although, uh, Nick, who's mixing that song, he, he was telling me about how awesome it was a while back and just like kind of mind blowing. And, um, so yeah, my mom got that for me and my brothers for Christmas, which, um, surprised me because she doesn't normally she always was like didn't ever want us to play video games when we were kids right but uh so it's kind of random but yeah it's awesome it's bizarre speaking of stadiums i mean now you can be an e esports athlete you know video game professional <laughs> yeah. video gamer and play in a stadium of people and it's it's trippy but i mean she must have seen some show. I saw this program. I'm sorry. I'm not doing yeah, it wrong. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, who knows, right? But it's funny, though, when I hear people talk, you know, if they talk a lot about one thing, I'm just like thinking, like, did they just watch like a, a news story about this? Or like that always runs through my mind because that, that happens to me, you know, of course, you know, like if I'm perusing the Internet and I see some story and I'm like, what? Well, you know, like he's you want to talk about it to somebody. So like the next person you see, you're like, Oh, I'm going to talk to you about this thing. You yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I noticed, I noticed that in myself. I noticed that in others. It's normal, I think, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know if that was the case with my mom. Cause she never, if it was, she never let on. Yeah. And yeah. Opened it and was very surprised. <laughs> well, it's better than like buying somebody like a puppy. <laughs> yes, uh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's like I don't know I don't if you want that. this, but yeah, here you go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> take tickets to When We Were Young Fest or something like that. Ah, uh, crazy. Are you guys playing that? No, we're not playing that. No, no. Oh, okay. No. no um, surprising. When I looked at the lineup, I was like, "This is every. This is crazy. The lineup's we, insane." Yeah, we we uh, we aren't available, but that's the thing. Is like, I we i don't know what we're gonna do you know going forward but we'll see we'll see what happens with this thing you know they they announced three three days three mm -hmm. days same lineup like just like what like okay um i'm sure it'll be it's fun. crazy i'm sure it'll be fun when, you know when i saw the poster i was like it was hard to believe that was real what i want to know is how many tickets are being sold because that'll make a difference on how you can move how you can get around totally you know that kind of stuff but yeah well you certainly can't watch that many bands in one day <laughs> not i person not cannot I. watch that many bands. somebody will try somebody's gonna be like i saw at least Every one song of it. yeah <laughs> <laughs> all 50 bands <laughs> paramore you know that, that that'll be fun uh you know they they just got back together or something like that, or they haven't played any shows or am I wrong about that? I don't know. I don't really, I don't know. Yeah. Don't know. There's a few others. I, I saw jawbreakers doing shows. I don't know if they're on that. Yeah. Show, but also Jimmy Eat world is on it too. That's right. Yeah. Jimmy Eat world's fun. Yeah. But they didn't, they've been, they didn't break up or anything. So no, I don't think so. Just, yeah. I guess it's not, it's not, I don't know. I'd have to look at the list again to see if it's a lot of, you know, reformed bands or not? I don't think so. I think it's most mostly bands that have been around, but but it's a couple of the you know the Mike Hem and Paramore that are sort yeah. of like the emo, yeah, emo, pr king and queen of prom kind of thing. Yes. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess that's true. It's a little more emo bent than uh, than punk rock. It's not like uh, Riot Fest or anything. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I mean, and I mean, Vegas is 
swimming in festivals. They've got punk rock bowling. They've got, I don't know what else they've got. I guess they're not swimming. They've got that, uh, got that life is beautiful, too. There's that <laughs> oh, one. that's right. That's right. Well, well, Live Nation is doing a festival like this for every genre, pretty much. Emo is sort of like the, the maybe the most underground one, to be honest, yeah. but uh, which is weird to say because it's so big. But, um, but, you know, I think the hip hop one will be huge. And it's just, it's, almost like the same style it's just like a huge a huge just smattering of of names yeah i don't know it's uh it it's 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 gonna destroy live music in the u.s just like it did um in australia i'm not happy about that but it's fun to just think about the actual show itself yeah 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 i have mixed feelings about festivals for sure yeah, it, it, for, for to clarify that statement a little bit more, uh, basically what happened in Australia, Soundwave Festival got bigger and bigger every year, and it's much like this festival. The lineup is just unbelievable, and we played it. It makes peace. Played it. I uh, played it with the Ataris. Um, I played it solo, even as a solo artist. Um, but it per we never toured Australia when that you know a. I'm not going to say again. We we did come back again after that, but we never toured while South uh, Soundwave Festival was a thing because it was such a big festival. So many acts were on it that that was the only game in town. So I'm not saying it's going to be like that because Australia is a much smaller country, uh, but punk rock, the punk rock scene is only so big, you know, and, and so like there, there's, people that, that go to those shows only have so much in their budget. And so, you know, they're going to stop going to regular local shows and just be like, I'm going to that festival. That's it. All right. That's yeah. my show for the year. Yeah. See you later. So that's like the negative end of it. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, if you, if, if that's what you like and that's what you want to do, go have a good yeah. time. Enjoy it. Yeah. I'm sure there are also people that prefer to, yeah. to be in a smaller venue yeah. without yeah. being so crazy you know i mean that's what i what i like i i look at those lineups and i'm like oh man that's so awesome like you know they got the misfits with danzig at riot fest or whatever and but i just don't like i'm not much of a festival goer you know so mm -hmm. but but then it's like it's not like those bands are touring i think you're right it's like the band's from a for the people who do prefer a smaller venue if the band's not touring then you can't you know you, you can't, can't go, go yeah they're not yeah exactly yeah. and that's what happened in australia is just you know the tours were much i'm not gonna say there was no tours but it wasn't worth it for us to go and do a normal tour when we could just go and do south sound wave and so yeah. and and Honestly, you know, that might be the case for, you know, some of these festivals. Um, I like playing festivals, you know, and if we play a festival in a certain city, we're probably not going to do a regular show there. So right. that's, that's just reality. I mean, that's, yeah. just, and, and so that's what it is. So for me, I pref I like festivals, but I prefer single shows. I prefer going to see a band, do their thing, see the opening bands, do their thing. And I'm good. But uh, at the same time, playing outdoors is fun. Being outdoors and seeing music is fun. So there's there's a time and place for both. We don't yeah. need to, we don't need to just, we'll just, you know, indoor shows suck too sometimes. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Club shows that is suck true. sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> there's pros and cons for both, for yeah, sure. And, and as, as the world changes and live music changes and the scene changes, there will be you know, so there's always going to be packed shows and stuff, but I think it's going to go back to the way it was. Remember before COVID when half the bands or maybe most of the bands that toured were broke after the tour were broke before and after the tour and they made no money and nobody went to see them. That's still yeah. going to happen. And you yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> that at least some things won't change. Right. Yeah. <laughs> enjoy it. People enjoy it. But, yeah. uh, you know, but I think, you know, even for the bands that were doing well before, it's there's going to be a smaller audience of people that want to be inside that that venue, mm -hmm. whether or not fear is founded or unfounded, you know, but it's just the reality of the situation, at least at this juncture. But we'll yeah. see as as time moves on, it'll change the 
the stream will will keep flowing i don't know yeah. i'm i'm uh, i'm excited about the future i'm not bummed i think uh festivals no festivals i don't care i'm gonna have a good time <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah 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 i for me i like i almost feel uh not i don't want to say grateful but like i wasn't in i feel like as a band being in a band like mxpx uh that your your world is you know got totally well i mean you guys it's not like you guys were touring nonstop. imagine being you know in a band that that's what you know 300 or 250 days out of the year is touring you know like yeah. going really hard and then covid if that, if that would have happened to us back, well, back when like Tsunami Bomb was touring full time, yeah. so, so was MXPX, you know, and that would have been weird. Yeah. That would have messed, messed me up. But because yeah, we were only doing those bands, yeah, you know, absolutely. For them. And, and what, they, what they like mentally had to go through, not, not only like, you know, questioning what's, what's going to happen and, and wondering all that stuff, but also like just not being able to play all the shows you had booked. And for me, it's like I'm kind of in a in between place musically, anyway. So it's been kind of a way for me. It's been a time for me to just be like, what am I doing? Do I, you know, how can I do the things I want to do with music, and what do I want to do with it? You know, right. and it, within the last, I think the last time I talked to you, I was in a more like weird place of like I really don't know and kind of bummed out about it but uh <laughs> since then i've just been like just kind of doing everything and it's and it's been fun again so um so that's yeah. amazing to hear and 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 you know i feel that exactly like you know there's just different different periods of development as a musician that you go through and and the, for those that were in their early development that's devastating to people you know because there's opportunities you can't get back um you know those right out of high school opportunities whatever it may be you know for us we just yeah. hit the road and never looked back we literally never stopped and if i would have had to stop for a year two years three years whatever it is i mean life's going to completely be different when you're on the other side yeah. it, you know whether or not you go back to that it's you could still go back to what you were doing but it's the trajectory is different. You know, it's not going to mm -hmm. be that same thing that I had or that, you know, we had with MXPX or somebody, you know, may have, but, you know, with, with people that, you know, like us, you know, you know, further, further along development in our lives, it really was a chance to figure out what do we want to do? You know, do, you know, there's, there's some people that, that crew people, a lot of, you know, people that would help out artists, either on the road or uh, in the office here, you know, on the internet, a lot of people just stopped working in the industry yeah. and got new jobs and doing something else and never like kind of never looked back, you know, and that's happening in all different types of, of, you know, industries, industries but yeah. not just us, you know, but you know, those of us in the music industry were like, yeah, if you can get out, good luck. But you know, <laughs> it's for me, I don't want to get out cause I love, yeah. I love, you know, I know that the struggle will never, it, it's not like people in some other business are like, yeah, I mean, yeah, things are easy. Even Wall Street people that make all this money, they feel that, that burn when everything crashes and they lose it all or whatever. It's like, there's always something, right? So I, I never really look, look at, at the grass being greener on the other side. Let's put it that yeah. way. But, but then again, who knows? Maybe it is, you know, it's... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but, but uh, we can't. We don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, I try to be open, open to things. But um, speaking of being open to like new things, what do you think about Web three? Have you heard the term? No, I haven't. <laughs> you haven't. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about this. <laughs> okay. I'm no expert. Uh, I'm no doctor, as they say, but. Uh, <laughs> Web three is is basically web one, web two, web three. You get it. It's the third line, but it's it's <laughs> the web changing into the blockchain. So NFTs. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crypto using the blockchain as ownership. So that that's kind of the one of the main tenets of web three is the idea that 
we're not just owned by corporations. We're not just putting putting life, real life from the world onto the screen. We're actually building things in the internet, within the internet, minting them on the blockchain. People can have ownership in things. So the metaverse is, is obviously like the main thing, right? With Web3, the metaverse being a place where you can put those goggles on, you've got it ready, yeah. ready to go. <laughs> and it's a little scary, but it's like, if they make it so interesting and so much fun, like video games and like YouTube, you know, you just get sucked into it. This is gonna be that like times 10 because yeah you're going to feel like you're living life, but everything's just bells and whistles. Interesting. This, that, um, that's web three. It's the metaverse. It's the blockchain. It's, it's all these things that are kind of like happening at a, at a breakneck pace right now. Yeah. And it's very, very new. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of fraud. There's a lot of people getting ripped off. Um, that's why you hear that NFTs are like a scam a lot of times, you know, cause some people are like, Oh, that's a scam. And other people are like, no, it's great. I think, I think it can be a scam, but I don't think NFTs in and of themselves are a scam. It's just, they yeah. can, people can get it taken advantage of very easily. Um, you know, with, with so many different things, like it's, it's insane, it's right? Worst. Yeah, it is the wild west. So that's web three. I'm sure I missed something important, but but um, so is it just the idea of like uh, everything because of blockchain and NFTs, just more of life being contained within the Internet? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Like people okay. starting to, to, to actually buy digital real estate. That's part of uh -huh. Web3. Web um, like now, like servers? <laughs> Snoop Dogg owns a house, a digital house on a server called the Sandbox. It's a meta space where you can go with your goggles and walk around and a guy a guy, you know if, if some guy I'm, maybe he's got a family probably not he bought <laughs> he bought a house next to snoop dog in the metaverse or not the real not the facebook version yeah. of metaverse but like in the sandbox metaverse for i want to say it was 400 something thousand dollars you know or maybe more four hundred fifty thousand dollars just to be neighbors with Snoop Dogg in the sandbox metaverse. So, so this is, it blows people's minds when they hear that and they're just like, whoa. Yeah. But if you think about it, it's, it's kind of like, it's, a, it's, it's social currency, obviously, mm -hmm. because, but it's digital social currency. So it's, it's having something in the online world that's very coveted and valued by a certain type of person. Not everybody's right. gonna care. Like, I don't care about being Snoop Dogg's, I mean, I would love to be Snoop Dogg's neighbor, but I'm not gonna You're pay. You're not gonna pay 450,000. <laughs> not yeah. for, not if I'm, not if I can't, if, if that sh house can't give me shelter, and like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, what, you know, it's but only for looking at, <laughs> but I'm not so short sighted to see that there's not value in that for others, you know, cause uh -huh. maybe I haven't found my Snoop Dogg neighbor house, you know, Yes. I, I need to find what is so valuable to me, mm -hmm. but that's fascinating. Yeah. You know, just it, it's, it's too much. Like I'm slowly taking it in and, and every now and then I'll read something about it, but I'm not like voraciously doing research on NFTs and crypto and all that. By the yeah. way, crypto completely has, has crashed, uh, gone very low. Uh, Bitcoin is, is down, way down to like, I don't know what it is, uh, probably like under 20,000 a Bitcoin and it was up at 54, like a couple of Oh, wow. Ago. Yeah. So. <laughs> I didn't realize, I didn't yeah. realize crash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a crash, but you know, I'm, I, I actually own not even a full Bitcoin. I own part of a Bitcoin and I've got another part of it in a different wallet, but the main wallet I use is Coinbase. And I, I was up probably like 30 grand at one point. And then now it's down to like 17 grand, but like, I, so now's I, the time to buy. Now's the time to buy, of course. <laughs> but the reason why I even disclose that is literally the money isn't real to me. I've never used it. I've yeah. never, it's, it's just numbers on a screen because I put the money, I put $300 in, I think it, maybe three or $400 in back in maybe 2010. And it bought Turkey. me, I think at the time, 
bitcoins were nine hundred dollars, nine hundred thirty dollars, something like that. I I didn't even want to put in enough to buy a full bitcoin. I was like, ah, I'm gonna put in four hundred. I don't even have this money. It was it was tight, lean years. It was 2010. You know, the music business had crashed, yeah. <laughs> or or was cra- Yeah, it pretty much was was in the shitter. But I I shouldn't have been you know putting four hundred dollars into bitcoin right and i did and i've let it sat ever since i still haven't touched it but yeah. um now it's at 17 grand so <laughs> it's, it's whatever it's those kinds of things you just set it set it and forget it right yeah but yeah. you know i still kind of i'm interested i'm interested in paying attention to where all of these things go because i feel like if it's really got momentum, if really something has momentum, then I can, okay, maybe I'll catch a wave. But by then you're usually too late, right? You're too late once yeah. <laughs> there's a momentum. It's like, okay, everybody's on it. But I heard something recently, which is kind of funny. Um, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, you know, she's been, there's been some talk in the press about stocks and, uh, you know, representatives of this country doing really well you know and uh, she was asked whether yeah. surprisingly well and she was asked recently that you know if that should be allowed and she was like oh the first time she was like ah oh, you know i think uh as an american citizen it's your right to participate in the stock market you know uh and then she was asked again another time and she's like well you know if they want to change the laws you know they can, you know, do, you know, whatever. I'm not going to fight it or something like that. Kind of like conceding to whatever happens, happens. But the reason why I mentioned the whole thing was not to be super snarky about uh, Nancy Pelosi. I mean, whatever. But uh, it was more to say that people have started following her, her stock buys. So like when she invests in something, people start have started just investing in that so like she's like a stock influencer now yeah so yes yeah, so now she's a stock influencer they just if you do whatever nancy does you're gonna be rich yeah you know, wow maybe not quite as rich as her because you get you know you have to wait until the disclosure <laughs> comes out and i think it's i think it's i could be completely wrong i'm not googling but two or three weeks maybe it's a month something like that you have to disclose your your stock trades I mean, I could be completely wrong. Maybe it's like six months. At, at that point, you're way off. I mean, you're you're yeah, you're you've too lost late. it. Yeah. <laughs> what about the what about uh, the music um, usage of NFTs? Have you? Because I I read a short article about how people are thinking about using that, like um, having your own. The thing that I saw about it that I thought was cool was that now since you know i mean there's vinyl of course but like everybody listens digitally but you don't actually own like even when you download even when you buy you know on itunes or whatever on apple music even when you buy an album or a song it's not actually yours because you need the platform and they can revoke it from you and and all this stuff right. so that was one thing that i thought was cool about the idea of nfts for music is that it's actually like no, this is a file like you, it's yours, you're buying it and you can also resell it as if it was a, like a, you know, a used CD or something. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something I didn't mention. Maybe I mentioned it briefly, but ownership is a big thing with web three and NFTs is, is just having ownership in more of the communities that you are part of. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing with that's coming out, you know, and it wasn't so much when, when we were growing up, um, it was more just you, you owned something yourself. Right. Um, but NFTs can be anything. They can be a concert ticket. They can be a, a sports team ticket. They can be, uh, a play, a trading card type thing. Art. they, they already are mainly known as artwork, and almost like trading card style artwork because you have them and you're proud of it. But eh, if you give me enough money, I'm not really that proud of it. Like, have it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, it, it can be anything. NFTs can be absolutely anything. The only thing that makes it an NFT is is it's tied to the blockchain. Normally it's Ethereum is the blockchain that they, they're using. I'm sure they'll come out with more. Um, but all you know it's funny all these corporations now uh nike ford 
motor company probably has one. Uh, they're all coming out with NFTs. Like, you know, 10,000 unique NFTs. And it's like, <laughs> what? okay. The Nike yeah. one's kind of cool. You know, you get, there's one that you can get that gives you a pair of sneakers that they put in a locker. And it's your sneakers. It's in a locker. It's there. And that way, you don't have to ship it out if you sell it. So there's so much in the sneaker community. Oh, interesting. Okay. There's, there's so much buy and yeah, sell. Collectors, yeah. And so you buy it, you sell it, so you don't have to like actually get it. You just have that NFT that gives you ownership of that locker. Well, but it's an actual physical locker with some, real shoes well, in it? You don't, yes, yes, it's a physical okay. locker with, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't own the locker, you own the shoes in it. Right, right. Uh, I assume. You probably lease the locker. But uh, yeah, so I mean, things like that. So like, there's real world integrations that happen with these NFTs. There's things like um, if you have this certain NFT, it gets you into the into this convention where you, you hear the speaker. But if you have this other NT, NFT, it not only gets you into the convention, but you also get a, a private lunch with 10 other people with the speaker, you know, like that, that kind of stuff. Like it's, it's like Kickstarter, digital Kickstarter on heroin. Or on crack, <laughs> on crack, maybe it's crack is a better <laughs> analogy. Heroin, like, uh. <laughs> but yeah, so NFT, you know, you just, you can just, it's literally anything. Yeah. <laughs> anything. I, I, yeah, it's hard to grasp the concept of the artwork. Like, that's one thing that I'm just like, do you, why do you want it digitally? You know? Like, I guess it's, I guess just collectors, mm -hmm. the, the collector mentality that I don't, I don't really, I don't really have, you know? I mean, yeah. I, I know that a lot of people are into collecting. Obviously, a lot of people are into collecting various different things. So that must be it. Like that's just what the it is. idea of, of yeah. owning something that's yours and that other people want. There's people that uh, have sex with dolls. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, there's something. Uh, the for digital art else. thing isn't too out there. <laughs> Real dolls. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> I don't have to explain to this podcast audience. They know. They know. <laughs> Oh God, just Google real dolls. <laughs> don't Google, don't use Google, use Brave. But uh, yeah. anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, I've always been about privacy, it, but uh, that's, that was a, a random ch change of subject, but, but it's well, just still going. Well, I mean, going. it ties in, it ties in. It ties in. it's all digital, right? Like, it's all digital. <laughs> sooner or later, everybody's going to I mean, except get for the real dolls, probably. <laughs> and that's going to be digital too, I'm sure. <laughs> But I mean, think about it this way, like people are still constantly hacked, right? Like, oh, my Facebook was hacked and, you know, don't answer any, any weird messages from me. You know, like yeah. that just happens all the time to people. Um, the, uh, what, is, what, like, uh, what do they call them? Ransomware. Ransomware happens all the time. Yeah. Um, other really, oh, I don't even want to get into this too far, but there's like this... I don't even want to get into it. Yeah, just <laughs> deep dark web. Yeah, really there's a lot of bad stuff, stuff out yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was listening to a podcast and was talking about it, but yeah, I I don't want to get into it. But the <laughs> the uh, let's go back. Let's go back. <laughs> How do we get back? <laughs> I saw that there was uh, flying cars. Speaking of the future, coming at us pretty quickly. Oh, really? Uh, flying cars finally in uh, finally <laughs> finally in like testing well they've been talking about it a while but it's finally like real um and you have to have a pilot's license to fly it oh okay it's like it's it's basically like flying a plane but it's a car that drives on the ground and then has wings and will take off i don't know how <laughs> how that works but they figured it out pretty amazing yeah yeah it'd be interesting to see how they're gonna integrate that into our roadways i'll try it i'll try it in the metaverse we'll put it that way oh yeah yeah good call <laughs> but yeah how i mean i i figure that at first it's got to follow any normal road rules and if you're too wide for it i don't know how that works but aside from that uh once you fly once you're in the air you just follow the normal fa faa rules right mm -hmm. yeah I, I would assume so logic says 
But what's the difference between that and just like a small plane? Does it start on the road? Is it actually a car that like? Yeah, I mean, a car, it's a car that drives and then just flies. <laughs> it's like, it looks That's like crazy. a, like a Ferrari kind of, I don't know if it's a Mercedes or, or what it is, but I'm just. I'm looking at my memory pictures right yeah. now. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it online, of course. I mean, are you are you feeling like like your routine has been good in 2022? Like you're not overwhelmed, you're not um anxious about I mean, you talked about your dreams, you know, dreaming about um things breaking on stage, but <laughs> yeah. is that is that a recurring nightmare <laughs> or No, uh, it was. It was, but that, that whole computer debacle was from a few years ago. So luckily, and I've had my drum pad, I've had, I've had my live set up, uh, more sturdy since then. So that, that, that nightmare has faded, <laughs> thankfully. Good, good. Um, yeah, I, well, I, I, as far as routines go, I definitely, uh, am still, usually the holiday season always throws me off cause I kind of, I like uh, you know, stopping, kind of stopping all the work and everything and just relaxing and, um, taking an, a nice break. So then it's always kind of hard. I mean, maybe I shouldn't do that because then it's hard in January to start doing everything again. You know, I hear you. I know what you mean. I, I have my own version of that. Basically in between Christmas and new year's, I'm pretty lazy, but, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, I think, <sighs> That's every year. That's every year. I don't think that's, that's just like, that's okay. I mean, it always yeah. gets started eventually, right? Yeah. Yeah. Usually January is kind of like a, it's a free month. Like I come, <laughs> yeah. Like I come out of the holidays thinking I'm yeah. going to do all this stuff again and I feel so motivated, but then I can't, it takes a little time to get back into it, you yeah. know? So, yeah. Think so about I'm like, kind of there. Think about like a bear, you know, they hibernate. They're missing a lot of months. You know, they, they get a lot done summertime, but then like, they're just sleeping. So at least you're not sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, All right. I'm easing my way back in. <laughs> that sounds like a good, a good place to, <laughs> to end it. <laughs> uh, so tell everybody, when is the show coming up? Uh, the show is in LA on March 19th at the Paramount. Awesome. And tickets went on sale today. So. Tickets on sale. Where can they get those tickets? Yeah. Uh, Audio Karate. Yeah, probably audio. all of Audio Karate's profiles and also the Paramount's website. They have an e-tickets thing on there. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, uh, thanks for doing it again. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Can't wait to hear the new album. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> All right. All right, have a good one. Yeah, Thank you. Should, you. Uh, you should stop by my uh, my Twitch and, and see how what a terrible bass player I am. <laughs> I will. I will. All right. I'm, I'm going to head it up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye, Emily. Thank you. Bye, yeah, every, bye you. everybody. Bye, everybody.